Well, good evening, everybody. Hey, come on in and stand with me.
of everything Oh, just one touch I feel the power of heaven Oh, just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe it There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can do Oh, there's nothing that our God can do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that Things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Oh, I know there's nothing that our God can do. There's not a prison wall He can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree, there's no power like the power of Jesus. Amen, amen. You guys can have us. All right. Uh, I know I promised you guys super exciting budgets and architectural plans, but I'm going to preach for just a second. So you can't trust a pastor when he says he's not going to preach very long, okay? Um, but I do want to begin uh, with a little bit of a devotional thought, and I asked Drew to lead us in worship just like we normally do on a Wednesday because here's what I want you to realize. Um, we have business and information to discuss but I do believe that what we are doing here tonight is a spiritual task, okay? Um, and so this isn't like, hey, we come here to worship sometimes, and then tonight we come here for business. Um, I believe our business and our worship are, are one and the same, and we do them um, collectively together, okay? Um, and so I want to read a couple words of scripture to you, give you a couple thoughts, and then we'll jump into the exciting budgets and architectural plans and things like that. Okay? So if you have your Bible, um, turn to Psalm 127. I'm only going to read two verses out of 127, and I believe they are instructive for our task at hand tonight. Uh, because I want to clarify also why you're turning there. Um, believe it or not, I've never led a meeting like this, so who knows really how this is even going to go. So we're all a um, little new territory, okay? Psalm 127, verse 1, it says, Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. 
It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. I believe everything that we do in our life is a spiritual task. Um, too many times we, we think like we have the spiritual world over here and then all of our daily life. Jesus cares about all of it. Everything you do is a spiritual task. And so a couple, um, I've even got points to this message. Um, a couple points for you. Um, and they're not on the slide, so you just got to listen. What this verse tells us is, we are laborers, but not architects. So it says, unless the Lord builds a house, the Lord is the architect. He has the plan. He has the leadership. Um, it says, unless the Lord builds a house, those who labor, um, those who build it labor in vain. We are laborers though. We don't just sit here twiddling our thumbs going, the Lord is going to plan the house and build it and do everything. We don't have to do anything. We first, we need to find what God wants us to do in life. And then we labor our life for it, all right? And so you can go one way or the other. Sometimes you, um, we can fall prey to be over here where we're too much laborers and think that we're the laborer and the architect all in one. And we do too much and don't rely on the Lord. You can also fall prey to this, fall the way, all the way over here and go, well, God's sovereign. He's the architect. He doesn't even need me. I'm not going to do anything. Let him do it all himself, all right? We need to be right here in the middle. We are laborers. We're not the architect. Uh, number two, we are watchmen, but we can't see the future. He says, it is in vain. Uh, no, unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It doesn't say, get rid of your watchmen. You don't need a watchman in your city. Just trust God to take care of it. There are watchmen, and when they're doing it with the Lord, they are not working in vain. They're doing their role. So we are ironically called to be watchmen, yet we also cannot see a day into the future like the Lord can. Um, we, we have to do both. Uh, and then lastly, we need to work hard. But don't wear yourself out and fall into anxiety. Okay? And that's going to apply to lots of areas in your life. You need to work really hard, but do not wear yourself out and do not fall into anxiety over the things you're trying to accomplish. He says, it's in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest. God's not saying don't wake up early and hustle. He's saying if you're trying to do it all on your own, you can wake up as early as you want, hustle as hard as you want, and go to bed as late as you want. And if you're trying to do it all on your own, you're not going to be successful. So we do work hard. There are days we wake up early and we hustle. Um, but uh, eating the bread of anxious toil. There's a different Look, there are two types. Like some days you go to work and you toil and work hard. You like wear yourself out, but you go home so satisfied at what you accomplished with peace. And then there's days that you go to work and you wear yourself out and you go home and go, I don't think I accomplished anything. Okay, you just, if you know that feeling, that's the difference in toil and anxious toil. Um, we sometimes, we, if we try and take too much responsibility for ourselves, we can wear ourselves out in anxious toil. Um, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Not that means we be lazy all the time and just sleep and let God take care of everything. We work hard. We don't fall into anxious toil. And at the end of the day, we go home and get a good night's rest. Because at the end of the day, we want to work hard, but God's the one that takes care of all this. Okay? And so, uh, with that, specifically for a task at hand, in um, a relocation campaign that began 19 years ago. Okay? 2005 is when we had um, a future ministry task force that led us to purchase our property, um, some men and women who are looking a long ways down the road in the future, and we are reaping a lot of benefits of some really hard toil that they did 19 years ago. Okay? So a couple things to task at hand from this verse. Um, this is less about a decision we have to make and a commitment to obedience and what God is calling us to do. We are going to labor, we are going to toil, like a, a building project is not easy. We're not, God's not going to just build it himself. We are going to have to put in a lot of work. But we're not going to fall anxious about any of this, and we're going to trust the Lord. We want the Lord to be the architect and BKD, um, and we also, and we want to be the laborers, okay? Uh, so it's not as much a decision to make as much as an obedience to discern 
Um, I want to remind you that this is a spiritual task at hand, which we've already talked about. And just be open and honest right now. We can't do this on our own. If you think we can, you need to check your heart, as John Christ would say. Um, I don't have enough notes if I'm quoting John Christ. <laughs> um, listen, you need to, like, we can't do this on our own. The sooner we admit and clearly understand together that, like, we can't do this on our own, we are at the Lord's mercy and looking for him on this, that's when we are most primed and ready to move forward, okay? So, let's jump into some um, details. I'm super excited to share all this with you. Um, I'm also super curious to just see how all this goes, okay? <laughs> um, I'm going to cover some information, and then I have handouts I'm going to give you that covers it. So if you, like, you don't have to take notes, the handout will come that will cover all of this, but I would like you to listen to what I have to say first. Um, if I just put this, I know, I, I'm just like you. If I, if I get a handout like this, I would stop listening to the speaker for a solid 10 minutes and read my, read my notes, and I'm in control of this meeting, apparently, so that's not what we're going to do. <laughs> Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Really, tonight isn't about any decisions. We have made some decisions along the way, and I'm going to clarify, just so you know, don't get your hopes up, there are still decisions to be made. Um, I think we're at the point where we want to update our church and help kind of bring you along to speed on where we've gone. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, just some decisions and things our Forward and Faith team has done in the last three to four months. Because if you don't know this, I'm new here, and I'm learning a lot of this um, as we experience it together. A lot of these, um, some of these decisions were made 19 years ago, and, and I'm excited. I kind of feel like I'm a, a bit of a Joshua leader. Like, um, you know, Moses already did all the real heavy lifting um, and got him all the way to the promised land, and Joshua just had to, like, get him across the river. I kind of feel like, you know, there are pastors before me who have done a lot of heavy lifting. We're just sitting there, kind of on the banks of the river, just waiting to know when, when to, like, cross over. So... Um, credit to pastors before me, um, and credit to a lot of people who have poured their heart and soul into this project, okay? So, but um, if you've seen, if you are aware of our previous renderings, uh, really we, we um, had a nice, a really nice building, <laughs> looked really nice um, as I began to know our church and discern kind of the size we are, the ministry we're doing currently, the ministry we're going to be doing, um, our current plans didn't quite match up to reality of who we are now. I think they were great plans for three years ago, um, but really we've grown. If you haven't noticed, we've grown a lot in the last three years, um, and we expect that growth trend to continue, and I would hate to spend millions of dollars to build and relocate to a building that isn't um, big enough for us to actually even meet in and have ministry, okay? So um, th we went back to our architects, and we had some tweaks that we asked our architects to make, and here's what we um, asked them to do. First off, we wanted to um, we wanted to value engineer is the term for it. We basically wanted to um, decrease some costs. We had a little bit of a Cadillac version, and we said, hey, could you show us the Chevy version of the same thing? Can you just like, what, what, like... We, we said, we need more square footage, and we need you to save one and a half million dollars off the project. And they didn't laugh at us, so that felt like positive, but we asked them to value engineer it, lower the cost per square footage. Also, in that, we did not discern the need. Previously, we talked about phased buildings, where like we build the worship center and children's space, then we add the gym, then we add adult space, which would mean if we followed that phased approach, we would build a building that we couldn't fully use. Like, I don't know, if you have a student in this building, the phased approach should have bothered you. Um, because we want our student ministry to have a space. So um, also in the phased approach, uh, long run it is more expensive because you're, you're having multiple build projects. So we asked them to value engineer it. Um, we wanted a facility that was capable of meeting our ministry needs. If we were going to spend this much money... We needed a building that actually could do church the way we need to do church. And that meant we needed room for our student ministry. We needed adult classrooms. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Well, we already said that. I, we added, we wanted to add some adult classrooms because I don't know if you've noticed, but we have adult life groups that meet every single Sunday. Um, and we needed space for that. Originally, we thought about using this building, continuing using, like, using this building and like, 
kind of going back and forth between the two campuses. Um, I, I don't think that would have been successful. So we asked to add um, adult classrooms. We asked to expand the worship center because as it stood, like if the plans we had, we would be outgrown it already before we even start building. And then if our growth pattern continues, we need a scalable option to where, you know, if we keep growing um, on our previous plans, if we kept growing the solution for more worship space was to build an entirely another worship center. And so we asked that they would give us kind of a, an expandable option that has um, expansion options down the road um, to get even more worship space. We, um, we asked them to cut out, if, you, if you're a builder of any kind, you know, every corner in a building costs money. Um, and we had a lot of corners. Uh, we asked them, we said, we'd like to have four corners just Square that bad boy off in a rectangle, give us more space, and um, just that, and that's part of value engineering it. Every corner you take out saves you a lot of money. Uh, we asked them to, yeah. We did, um, we, we went ahead and we consolidated down the children's space a little bit. We did not consolidate children's classrooms. We, have the, we, wanted, we need the same amount of classrooms. Um, the classroom size stayed the same. So if you know our old plans, it shrunk kind of the, um, the middle room, the large group room, a couple things there. So they consolidated that down just a little bit because we were trying to um, shave off as much square footage as we can for other areas. And we also asked them to add one to two offices to the office hallway because our staff is also growing. Okay. So um, here is the, I'm going to show you the floor plan that they sent us back. We'll have it on the screen. Um, if you can't see that, it will be on your handout. It will be a little small um, if you can't see that. Um, Clint has the big master one from BKD. You're more than welcome afterwards to come up and look to your heart's content on the large scale of it. But basically what they did was um, it still keeps a very similar layout and floor plan that we originally had. It adds more square footage. If you see along the, both sides of the worship center, they added three adult classrooms on each side for a total of six adult classrooms. In the future, if our church keeps growing, that gives you an expandable option to where you can knock out those walls and four of those classrooms morph into your worship center and, add, and it can add another 115 seats to the worship center capacity. Um, the, the, these plans here show a worship center that has capacity of 340 seats. If and when we, if we need to expand, we can add an additional 100, 115 seats without doing like a major new build or project. It is far easier to add adult classrooms onto a building than to build an entirely new worship center. So I think it gives us some really good options for the future. We're looking even farther down the road to where we don't regret some of the, you know, like being locked in. Um, it adds some offices. It moves the bathrooms around just a little bit, but not really that that big. Um, the atrium shrunk down just a little bit. We had a lot of, for three hundred dollars a square foot. We had a lot of atrium space, um, which is, as we have learned, it would be real nice to have an atrium. But it did shrink down just a little bit. And when you're looking at the building, one of the most expensive parts of the building that's the easiest part to cut is glass. Glass is super expensive. And it, it's, so if you're going to value engineer something, you're going to lose a lot of your glass. So this does take out a lot of the glass that's in the front. Still, there's plenty there, but when you take out, it saves you a lot of money for not that much return. Okay. And so the, I'm going to show you in just a second. This is the floor plan. We can come back to it. Uh, we will have a time for questions at the end, but I'm going to show you what, and now um, we went through two different um, cycles of revising these plans. Um, this is the exterior of this design. They're going to cycle through this. This is the most basic, like, hey, bring us the cheapest option possible to where it has, so how, you can see it has um, a lot more of just kind of warehouse front. It's that this is value engineering at its finest. Um, it's not necessarily the prettiest thing in the world, but it does save a lot of money. Uh, and and so this is this is good. We um, I, they were on the right track. They did exactly everything we asked of them. But we did in talking with them, we made a couple of tweaks, and we came back to them and said, 
Um, to quote my wife, she said, it looks like Amazon. Um, it, looks a little, it looks a little retail, and so I wouldn't be offended if it looked a smidge nicer. We don't need anything super fancy, but, you know, maybe, maybe not a metal building. And so, like, I, I, li- I like it. If this is what we could afford, I'd be more than happy with this. But we, did w- we went back to him and said, hey, you know, with the numbers, if you had a little bit more to spend on the front, like a reasonable amount... What could you do to make it to change the front and make it a little bit nicer? And so we came up with this second redesign, which is this one, which kind of expanded the front a little bit, put a little bit more of that glass back in. Made some, we made some tweaks on just some textures and stuff, and I think this second one lands on a much uh, a cost-effective and attractive version. Now, I show you both of those because I want to communicate something. Don't get your heart set on an exact plan right now. I'm I'm not showing you, I'm not making you promises right now. I am showing you the design process. Um, I think, we we told BKD, um, hey, if you had another $100,000 on the outside, what would it look like? I think this is more like $250,000 on the outside. And so there may actually, we may end up with a, a hybrid between those two options. We want to, we want to maximize our dollars, but also have a building that reflects um, what we're trying, the ministry we're trying to lead here, okay? We don't want to outclass our community, but then we also want to have a, a church building that we're proud of and that we believe honors the Lord in, in even the way it looks, okay? So that don't, we'll, we're, we're going to put these designs up on the wall like we've had, um, but also keep in mind, like we want these are visual representations. We're taking steps towards it. Even if we green lighted it today and said, yes, we're going to start building, there will be one more round of revisions that are made on a couple tweaks and stuff. So I'll show you both of those to just kind of tell you the, the, the direction it's going and understand the process. Okay? So this is, um, that's what, this is where we've landed right now. I'm going to talk to you the financial side, all right? Uh, That's what it looks like. Our goal in talking with BKD, our goal was a $6 million building. We felt like $6 million was what we could really afford easily. Uh, That that was our goal. Um, That was an ambitious goal. Uh, So we started there. This current project, which is a 32,000 square foot building, um, comes in at six point eight million dollars. We do. We believe there's an additional four hundred thousand in just like that builds your building. Everything that's screwed down is in that cost. There's additional costs in like furnishings and like um, audio and visual visual stuff. We think about four hundred thousand dollars, which would put us. You can see right here at the bottom a bottom line of seven point two million dollars. Which I know. Listen, hang with me. I know that's a stupid amount of money. Like, that is so much money. Um, It's crazy what stuff costs right now. Um, I I still, uh, me personally, I believe $7 million is a ton of money. Professionally, I know we're actually at a good pace. Because here's what I want to show you. It's smaller on the side. You might not be able to see it. Look where we've come on our previous numbers. 2021 and 2022 we were pricing a 22,000 square foot building. So it didn't have anywhere for adult classrooms and it didn't have anywhere for student ministry. So we've, the reason it's a bigger number is because we also have added another 10,000 square feet because that's the reality of the church that we have. And so in 2021, we originally had a cost per square footage of $212 a square foot. In 2022, we kind of got sticker shock when it went up to $306 a square foot. So if you see the square footage price, our architects did what we asked them to do, and they brought the cost down by one-third. They, brought, they shaved off $100 per square foot. On a 32,000 square foot building, is that means they shaved off $3 million from the project. So I know we still have a big number, but I want you to be like, Be hopeful on this. We are on the right track. BKD did exactly what we asked them to do. Um, The reason the number is big is because, guys, we're a pretty large growing church right now. Um, And that's a good problem to have. I really, this this is, yeah. 
So cost per square footage, they brought us down almost exactly to the cost per square footage we had in 2021. The difference in the bottom line is we're pricing a 32,000 square foot building rather than a 22,000 square foot building. So bottom line of 7,200,000. Um, so let's talk about where we are at financially right now. So here is um, our best projected numbers. Basically, if, if, none of, if no one gave a dime to Forward in Faith, this is where we would be in one year. Because our general budget, is we have it built in our general budget, 20% of our general budget is going towards our building project, almost $200,000 every year. And also the $2 million we have is gaining interest. So we have our Forward in Faith is somewhere around over $2.2 million. That, that number is in your bulletin every single week. Um, the yearly general budget, one year from now, would put in almost another $200,000. Uh, yearly interest is going to bring in $90,000, almost $100,000. Um, oh, one, one thing we need to talk about. I do believe we should factor in, and I believe we can, I don't think it's presumptuous, to factor in the sale of this building. I don't know details on that. I have some thoughts. But if we can find a buyer, and that's an if, if we found a buyer, it would be wise for us to sell this property. Now, um, I don't know about you, but I get sentimentally attached to not just my church, and our church is the people, but our our church has been meeting in this building on this piece of land for a long, long time. And so I know that brings a ton of mixed emotions with it. But if we have, there's no reason for us to be paying that much money to upkeep two buildings. This building is increasingly costing us an upkeep. Um, you have to carry insurance on it. You have to run AC units. You have to, all those things. There's no need to be running, keeping two buildings. If we have a if we have a building project that we can actually move to. So um, I do believe our best guess, who knows, like this type of property is not just, you don't just sell this on Zillow. Best guess, half a million dollars. That would put us with almost $3 million if no one gave a dime, okay? So easily we have $3 million in the bank. And in the home buying world, like if you have 50% down, 50%... Um, like, man, you're golden if you've got more than 20%. So we're looking at, we have easily, no one giving any more money, 50% of the need. Um, our next slide, though, shows you take that $2.9 million number, um, and I, I, I think, look, here's the bottom line. We're not there quite yet. I think we're close. I think we're really close. And I am super optimistic. I really believe... Um, I really believe this is doable in the very near foreseeable future. Uh, if our church, if we among us could raise another $720,000, which is basically what we've raised over the last three years. $2.2 million that we've raised in the last three years. Divide that by three, and you're looking at really about the same thing. And then we could take up to a loan of $3.5 million, pending conversations with lenders, would put us at our $7.2 million cost range. So this is, these are, we, are, we are moving from hard numbers to speculative numbers. This is where I think we fall. Um, I think we could easily raise that. I really believe we could raise more if we needed um, in, in a year's time. We don't have to have all that raised even to begin the process. We, have, we, can, we can get a long ways into the process before we even start borrowing money because we have, and we would spend a lot of the money that we've saved up first. Um, Ross said, when we, when we break ground, I didn't put this in the notes, when we break ground, it's about a 13-month building project. So if we said today, hey, build it for us, our architects would spend about another three to four months fleshing out all of the plans just so it has every little detail for the builders to build, getting permits, getting all the things all set to go, break ground, 
and then a 13 month build project. So we're still, even if we said yes right now, it would be a 16 month project ambitiously, okay? So that's kind of time frame we're looking at, even if we said yes right now. So in that project, really, we don't have to take out a loan for months further into the project, okay? So, oh, yes, uh, I don't think I have a slide for this one. If we, um, really, loans are, uh, who knows what loans are doing right now. Um, there are uh, a plethora of opinions about what loans are going to do in the next year. Um, some people are just super ambitious about it. Some people are super pessimistic about it. Who really knows? Um, I'm going to give you a range. It would put, depending on how much of a loan we take out, what interest rate we get, what length of time the loan is for, we're looking at anywhere from a, uh, a loan being anywhere from $20,000 to $30,000 a month payment, which our general budget right now is putting $16,000 a month into it. So we're really, we're pretty close on that. We, you want to, we want to move forward in faith. You don't necessarily borrow money just completely on faith though, okay? Um, we want to, we want to move forward boldly and in faith. Uh, when it comes to borrowing money, we want to be wise on it. So who knows where that range falls? We, we need to talk to some lenders. Really, one of the steps we're working on right now is just thinking through what lenders to price with and start seeing where that's at, okay? Who knows what interest rates are going to do? We have some bankers in the room that can tell us, though. Okay. Uh, one other note. This is an optimistic note. If you have... Um, been to one of these meetings before, there is a, there's a grant that we apply for. There was a um, super rich man in um, Minnesota, I believe, who made his fortune in the tool and dye industry. And when he died in, oh, I can't remember. Do you remember? Okay, I did this research a long time ago. He died like a decade ago. And he put all of his fortune into a trust and asked for it to be used to help churches, he was a believer, to help churches build worship spaces. It only qualifies for square footage used for worship space. And they get applications every year and they approve certain projects to receive that grant money. In 2002, we were approved for the grant. So we, we received, we we were approved for it. You moved to another phase where you have to like send in all your like updated numbers. And that's when we got that sticker shock um, price of $300 a square foot in 2002. So the grant isn't really that far-fetched. I, I, I believe it's really possible. What? 2022. What did I say? We, we, that was before we even bought the property. Boy, a grant would have been nice but in 2002. Um, it would have been real nice. <laughs> I, I asked our team, I didn't want us to be at the mercy of the grant though. I don't like just completely trusting in the grant because what that does is we're just like, I don't know, it's September. Let's apply for the grant and see if we can build a new building. Oh, no, we can't. We'll try again next year. I don't like feeling like we're at the mercy of just a grant approval. Last year's grant, we... We asked for a much larger sum, and we did not approve for it. But that was because if we were going to build, they needed to kick in a lot of money. Um, we, we really needed them to turn us down last year. This year, we'll ask for a realistic amount of money. So we will still apply for It's called the Lasco Grant. Um, our best guess right now, we would apply for about a $600,000 grant request. And you can apply this year. You can apply while you're building, or even after you build. So very easily, we apply this year in 2024. If it doesn't come through, we can apply again in 2025. And I'm extremely optimistic about the grant, but I just don't want us to be grant dependent. If we get approved for the grant in the fall, you apply in September. You usually find out in November. Um, man, we're it's all green lights. If we if we get the grant. We, we can roll in with super easy, okay? Um, so we will still apply for the grant. All of these plans and numbers, though, I wanted us to be realistic with what we can do without it because I don't want us to just depend on it. 
I think I covered that clearly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so last, the last thing to cover and talk about is the question you really want to know on timeline. So like, when are we going to do this? Um, I have, um, especially a lot of our senior adults who have asked me, are we ever going to get to see this building before we die? Um, and I, um, honest to goodness, I hear you and I, uh, am, I am burdened for that. I know we have, we have a lot of brothers and sisters who have already, who have given their heart and soul to this project and have already passed away and are going to see it. Um, some of them will be Moses figures who never truly get to see the promised land. And, but I believe for many of us, we're close and as many of you saints can see that building as possible, I'll, we'll, we'll do it, okay? Um, so timeline really is, that's the unknown. I don't have the answer on that yet. Uh, a couple things I do know. I thoroughly, 100% believe we can do this, okay? I really do. I don't know when we, when we actually green light that and do it, but I believe this is um, clearly the vision that God has placed in our church for almost 20 years. And I believe we can do this together. Uh, number two, I believe it is more than feasible. We are well within um, range. We're looking at like 20%, 20, 25% of our general budget needed for a loan. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine who pastors a church in Springfield who has a large older building. And he told me that 55% of their yearly budget was used just in building maintenance. So we're over here kind of stressing about like, oh man, are we really okay with 25% of our general budget paying off a loan? Well, there are churches in Springfield where 55% of their budget is just used to maintain their building. So I think this is more than feasible. Um, but what we do want to, we want to be wise because we, do, we, we believe this is what God wants us to do. But we also don't want to sacrifice current ministry right now. We want to be able to keep doing the ministry um, to people in our church and our community. We don't want to have to sacrifice ministry or staff to build a building. So we, more than feasible, but we do want to be wise there on it. Um, I do believe the time is close. I don't 100% know what that even means, but I believe it is close. And the very last thing I want to say is, I want, we want to have this meeting so that you are updated and you know. Um, this will be a collective decision with our leadership. This is not a Pastor Luke decision. Um, this is a collective leadership decision. And for this decision, that leadership decision is going to come through our staff, our forward and face team, and our deacons. Those are three groups. There's some overlap there. But if we have consensus in all three of those groups of leadership, um, all three of us are going to make that, that final decision of like, yes, let's move forward. Okay. Um, it's, we have voted on this in the past. Like this is clearly 19 years ago, we decided this is the direction we're going. This isn't like, oh, we got to go back and vote on this again. We're still just working out how to do what the body of Christ has already decided to do. So the final decision will come through staff, leadership, staff, Ford and Faith team, and deacons. Okay? So at this time, um, I have some, I'm going to pass out paperwork. Now you can read my notes. Um, and to do this, I want to introduce to you, while they're passing them out, who is on our Ford and Faith team. Because if you have questions now or in the future, you don't have to just come to me. You're more than welcome to come talk to me. Um, Kent Keltner is on our Forward and Faith team. The most optimistic person on our Forward and Faith team right now. Kent is ready to build last year. All right, we have Clint. Um, he is on our team. Uh, Drew, any, um, our full-time staff members are also on that team. So Drew's on the team. I'm on the team. Joey's on the team. Brent's on the team. And then in serving faithfully for us, we have Mark and Nancy Dempsey who have been running slides and stuff for us. They're also on the team. So if you have questions, thoughts, concerns, you're more than welcome to come talk to me. You can also come and talk to any of one of them. They know everything that I know. Um, probably some of them know more than I know. All right? Here's what we're going to do. I, um, I do like, I thrive on helpful 
feedback. I really do. Um, and I also believe I like you to have times to ask your questions. So this looked super successful when we did the Q&A with Joey. Um, if you have a question, I'm going to take some, we got like 20 minutes here. Um, let's do some Q&A. Um, if you have a question, send me an email um, right now to my email, luke at fbcclever.org. If you cannot, do not have that capability on your phone, find a younger person sitting next to you and say, would you send this question? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to alienate anyone, but this is a really tech-savvy way to do this. Uh, it takes the pressure and the awkwardness off a hot mic, um, but also allows us to field lots of questions, okay? So I will be scrolling my phone, but I'm reading through your questions, and I'll answer them to the best I can. Um, I may, depending on how many questions you send in, I may not be able to answer all of them. And I've got four questions to start us while I wait for you guys. But I have to find them. Okay, so any questions are fair game. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you I don't know the answer. Someone else might know them. If they're kind of redundant, then I'll just pick one. If they're incredibly volatile, I'll come talk to you later. <laughs> um, okay, but I, I already thought through a couple of questions that I have. I said, email me, not text me. We went through this last time. Disqualified. Uh, will, um, here's a question I've gotten before. Will we still have a play place? Yes, we will. The play place is... Um, a really unique thing that we have that our kids love, and it really has breathed a ton of life into our kids' ministry. We wear that thing out. We use it all the time. Yes, there will be a play place. Yes, the at least as far as the architecture shows, it will be bigger than the one we have now. It will be smaller than the one originally drawn up three years ago, though. Okay, So we will have a play place. Good news. Um, another question we get all the time is, we see this big number and go, what can, what, how much of this work can we do ourselves? Um, because if you know our history of our church, like this student building over here, church members picked up those rocks and gathered them. I wish that we lived in a world and had a small enough build that we could just muscle through it ourselves. Um, I do a lot of my own home remodels. I've remodeled a house before. I'm capable to do those things. Um, I am not a commercial builder, though. Just because you can remodel your own personal home does not mean you're a commercial builder. Building a 32,000 square foot building is far different than building your home. And so the answer to a lot of it is, honestly, honest to goodness, the world we live in, the steel frame we're looking at, the nature of a commercial build, there are very little things as far as the structure goes that we can just like do ourselves to save money. And honestly, like no offense to your skill sets, but like I wouldn't quite trust us to do them ourselves. This is a massive commercial build. There are some things on the back end like landscaping. Absolutely. Our co contractor gives us tons of freedom to freelance, not freelance, subcontract. That's what I'm looking for our own folks. Um, you'll see like on the, they've even cut some things back to where on the blueprint there, the bathroom there by the gym is actually um, when we move in will be an unfinished bathroom probably. They're going to plumb it, have it all ready, but it's going to be a storage building, storage room at first because that's a good in-house start to finish project. We might not be able to, we can't build a steel frame, but we can do a bathroom. And so there's a couple pieces like that where there are um, projects uh, to be done, okay? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to answer this one because we've gotten it a lot. Uh, as of right now, we do not have plans. Please don't shoot me. We do not have plans for a library in the new building. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. At $212 per square foot, building a building that is still barely large enough for to house our entire church, library space, unfortunately did not meet the priority. We got, a, we got a lot of things that we have to have that a lot, a lot of the want to haves falls off. I do think um, just from my own observation, kind of um, the best resource for families, like a lot of churches, they'll have like resource centers where it's not necessarily a library, but like um, maybe like 20 
pastor recommended books where it's like, hey, we want people to just take these books and, and have them, okay? So if you see that in the plans, as of right now, it's not built in there. Um, it's just a, a want that didn't make the have to have list, okay? Let me check my email and see what I got here. I'm so excited. Oh, look at all these questions. I love it. It's, oh, yep. <laughs> I was like, Chelsea, why did you send me a message? <laughs> um, Fellowship Hall, do we have one? Where is it at? The gym will function the same way we use our fellowship hall. So like for diner meals on Wednesday night, that, there's a kitchen, a built-in kitchen right there on the side of it. Um, we'll have tables. It'll be a room that we have to flip as much as we flip the fellowship hall. But we will use the gym as a student building. We will use the gym as a fellowship hall to eat in. Great question. Um, who gets the biggest office? Clearly, that's yours truly. Um, let me see. Oh, this is a fun question. How many are we having attending current services, and how does that compare to how many the new building would accommodate? Great question. We are running about 550 to 600 every Sunday morning in worship. So it's divided between three services. We used to, those Sundays when this room was like packed so much there weren't even spots on the front row, we were somehow, thankfully no fire marshal attends our church, cramming 280 people in here per service. So right now, we're, we're, we got about 550 to 600 divided bet between three services. So a sanctuary that seats 340 could house our church in two services. Let's see how much we grow between now and then. <laughs> Don't hold me. Yeah, great question. Oh, man. Sorry, I keep looking at the people that sent these. <laughs> Um, will there be an opportunity to renew Forward and Faith pledges, especially with how many new members we have? Yes, yes, yes. That $720,000 is going to need to come from us. So there will be a giving campaign aspect to it. I want to promise you this. I don't know how long that goes or what that looks like. I promise you I will not ask you guys to give us money um, for building projects for the next 10 years, hopefully. Like, I do want there to be an end date to where it's not just like, don't feel like, I know a lot of people have given generously to this and are like, am I ever going to be free of this pledge? There will be an end date. Um, I don't want, uh, there, we, yeah. Um, usually, my pastor friends say three years is the maximum that a giving campaign can run. And whether you know it or not, that giving campaign went through this May. So we will probably... When leadership makes the decision to green light us to move forward, we're working on plans for a one-year giving campaign to roll out. I think if we all pull together, give generously, I think a one-year giving campaign. Knowing that some still will hopefully keep coming in um, afterwards. I also, um, this may just shoot it in the foot, but I, this is what I biblically believe. I'm going to go ahead and say this now. As much as we want you to give to Forward in Faith, our building campaign is not your tithe. There's a difference biblically in your tithe and an offering. Tithe is 10% of your income. So I personally believe 10% of the money I make, the Lord owns. To give less than it would be robbing from the Lord. Okay, um, that does, we do get the 10% from the, some people say, well, 10% is not in the New Testament. You're right. That means 10% is bare minimum. <laughs> if you want to be on par with the Israelites in your obedience, 10%. New Testament, Paul says, sets the bar far higher where it's generous giving. So really, I do believe 10% is the minimum. I, I have tithed 10%. Since I started getting an allowance when I was a child, I remember putting, having my own personal offering envelopes and putting 15 cents in every single Sunday morning. I've tithed since I was five years old, and I will tithe till the day I die. And I do believe my income, the Lord owns. I know he owns all of it, but he owns 10% of it. So um, giving campaign, as far as my biblical convictions... 
I need you, I believe you should tithe, and I believe those are offerings above and beyond. Fun fact, if you run the math on how many giving units we have in our church, just families in our church, based on average income for this area, our general budget would be around um, $1.2 million every year. That is $400,000 more than it is right now. So, unpopular opinion, man, I better get off this soapbox real fast. <laughs> If I believe if every single person tithed in our church, we wouldn't even need a building campaign. If every single person tithed in our church, we should be running more around the range of a general budget of 1.2 million. I'm not saying that to guilt you. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to actually, as your pastor, biblically lead you. I better stop. We got more questions. Um, ooh, this, is there a timeline for the $720,000? My goal is 12 months. I don't know when we'll push start on that. That depends on leadership decision. Great feedback, folks. Oh, man, lots of questions on the worship center capacity. Um, I, yeah, 340 is good right now. Um, I'll, you know what? I just love to be transparent. I, I am an open book. You don't ever have to wonder what your pastor is thinking. Um, I think there is an outside chance that if our church just keeps growing, that we may end up building with only two of those adult classrooms if we r really keep going. I don't know. We'll see. Those are decisions down the road, but we are cutting it close on. Um, yes, you can give Bitcoin. I'd be more than happy to take your giving in Bitcoin. Um, how much of the current church's furniture, equipment, and electronics will be moved? Um, I.e. kitchen equipment, pews, chairs, things like that. We will cannibalize as much of this building as we possibly can, but I do not intend... Man, these are some hot takes. I, I, I prefer to just answer these right now, just you know. I do not intend to move the pews. Um, they won't fit in the, um, the plans there. Um, when you, if you put chairs in, you can statistically, you can feed more people in a room in chairs than you can pews. Because if I sit down someone next to I don't like, I leave one chair in between me. But if I'm in a pew, I sit on the other end. You end up with two people sitting on both ends, no one sitting in the middle. That's slightly hyperbole. Um, can we subcontract the dirt work or does it have to be a bid with the contractor? Part of the reason we chose to use Ross Construction is they gave us more freedom than other contractors on choosing our own subcontractors. That was a motivating factor in choosing Ross Construction. Um, we can choose to subcontract ourselves any part of the project. We will need to be wise in doing that. We're not going to just, um, we want our builder to, we don't want to just wear them out. But yes, we have the freedom to subcontract. Here's what I don't want to do. Like if we say, oh man, like we could subcontract the drywall. If... When they build a building like this, they line everything up. If one subcontractor goes wrong or takes too long, all the subcontractors behind them get backed up. And they've got their projects lined up. And so if we say, hey, we're going to like, you know what, we can paint the church. We're going to paint the church ourselves to save the money. And turns out it takes us three times as long to paint that much space. All contractors behind us just had to get rescheduled. So anything we subcontract will be better if it's at the beginning or the end of the entire project. So to answer that question, um, dirt work would be one of the better things to subcontract. If you know a subcontractor who would be interested in working on our build project and make us a deal, talk to me, Clint, or someone on, the, someone on our team. We do need to start collecting a list of that. If it's just like, if they're not going to make us a deal and it's just like six one way, half dozen another, I'm going to default to what Ross Construction wants. Like if it doesn't save us money, I'm going to try, we're paying our contractors a lot of money to do this for us. If we're going to insert ourselves and take on that burden, it better save us some money. Ooh, great question. Where's the baptism on the print? It's not on there. We're, we're Never mind. <laughs> I don't say everything, I think. Um, it's not on there. Um, we've never actually had the baptism on the plans. There are options that will really be cost decisions. 
on builds like this, they have really nice ones that you build into the floor. They have like a cover that goes across them, which would be efficient on our space, would be super awesome. I think that'd be fun to like pop up one day for a Sunday morning service, I don't know. Um, those are more expensive options. Uh, you can also, super trendy, you just put a cattle trough on the stage and you baptize away. Um, it really, baptism will be one of those decisions that get made in that next three-month phase where we have to decide where we spend our money. The baptism could end up costing, depending on how swanky we want to be, it could be expensive. <laughs> You're killing me, guys. Um, does the new facility have a prayer room? We do not um, have a designated room for prayer built into it. Um, I will say, I, I believe um, Jesus says, my house shall be a house of prayer. Um, I would classify, probably, I'm not being sarcastic in this, honest to goodness. Um, I would classify every room in our building as a prayer room. Um, a lot of times, prayer rooms, I've seen in churches, most churches I have that have prayer rooms, the prayer room never gets used, really. Um, it turns into a closet. So um, prayer is going to be, must be a key part of our church. Um, as far as cost per square footage goes, let's make the whole thing a prayer room. Mm. Would this type build be considered an option for Clever Residence Community Tornado Shelter? Um, no. Um, I believe, Clint, do you have a better answer? I think that would be a substantial more cost. Mm. If you've got access to boatloads of money, I'm listening. <laughs> Um, but I think ultimately the plans right now do not qualify to be a tornado shelter. Um, um, ooh, this is a good question. This one, I've actually had this before. Um, could a steeple be added to reflect the look of a church? Um, it could. You can do anything. Um, steeples are uh, shockingly expensive. Um, every steeple I've ever known leaks also. I have... I'm as much a fan of steeples as I am sunroofs in the top of your cars. They look great. Um, you just cut a hole in the top of your car, um, whether you like it or not. <laughs> uh, uh, so we could add it. It's not part of the plans right now. Um, honestly, um, I haven't seen a church built in the last 20 years that has a steeple. I don't know. But the plans do not have it. We had, if you remember the old design, there was like the, the cross feature on the front of it, um, which kind of like did make it look more like a church. Um, Cost-wise, that got the, didn't make the cut. Can the um, floor plan still be adjusted or is it set in place? Um, anything can be changed that we deem necessary. Like, don't get crazy with it, but none of those things are set in stone. We are, there's a couple things that we've, our team's already talked about, little small tweaks that need taken care of, so it's not too late on anything like that. Um, does the $400,000 estimate for furnishings include all the kitchen appliances? Um, does that include outside play structures for the children? Um, kitchen? I don't know. My guess is industrial kitchen costs way more than I think it does. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, I don't know the answer to that question. That will be one of those things that in the next phase where we've got to make some decisions on. As far as outdoor play structures, we bought a new nice playground. It was installed just last year, right? Um, and we bought it, a good, nice one, and we bought it with the intentions of taking it with us. It can be moved. Um, we will cannibalize as much as of the... I should stop saying that word. We will um, reuse... As much, <laughs> I don't know why that was sent, man, it's a good word, um, <laughs> as much as the current play place as possible is what I've heard. Great question. I mean, if we can move it and it saves us money, I mean, guys, I'm in the business of saving money. We're talking a lot of money here. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I've covered that. There will not be a Starbucks in it. 
Um, ooh, great question. Is the parking lot included in the price? Um, yes and no. Correct me if I'm wrong. Code says that we need, we, ha we are required by, it's either Christian County or Clever, but either one of those codes are going to overlap. One paved parking place per four chairs in our worship center. So the way our worship center is set up, we are required by code to have right now 88 paved parking places. So that is included in that price. Um, honestly, Ross said that would be an area that they think might be a, come under budget on. So parking is included. 88 parking spots is not enough for all of us. And so uh, gravel lots are way cheaper than paved lots. So there will probably be a paved parking and then a gravel lot. Um, so really like good handicap parking up at the front, place where families can park, and then a slightly less convenient parking, but far more convenient than the bus barn. That's a good question. Ooh, I got the steeple twice. Um, yep, the answer to that one is there's options to tweak those things. Uh, will there be a family room or cry room? Um, where parents can step out with crying infants or toddlers and still hear the sermon, you better believe it. Absolutely. We got a lot of kids around here. There is one built in. That's a, I, I would put that as a non-negotiable on my list. That's, yeah. We took out the steeple to put the cry room in. Just, God, I'm sorry. I should probably stop about now. Hannah's going to start stressing back there. Um, if we need to take adult classrooms away for the worship, will we be utilizing the gym such as we do for the fellowship hall now for classrooms? Um, my best guess on that would be no, because student classes are going to be meeting in there. And uh, if we think that the fellowship hall is loud as it is, imagine throwing a couple student classrooms in there. It would not be ideal. Um, adult, if... If I were to look even farther down the road and say, what is the next thing we need to add onto this building? And we've said this all along. There may be an additional adult space in the back. Um, I'll also be honest with you. Um, I'm from Arkansas, and this doesn't bother me. Um, you can drop a couple portable offices in the back and get really cheap classroom space. Um, it's not, we haven't talked about that with the team. Surprise. <laughs> um, but there may be options down the road where, like, but I do not think it would be, I don't think it would work to have adult classrooms meeting in the gym. Um, there's going to be a lot of noise already in there. The gym is going to be student space. So great question. We still are probably a little short on adult classroom space. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to call it quits now. If I miss, I might have missed an important one, but at this point I'm just seeing unimportant ones. Okay, um, here's what we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap us up. Uh, I actually, I, um, I intended to pray between my devotion and the um, information. I should have already prayed by now. I'm going to close with some prayer. And I want to remind you, um, this is a spiritual task we're doing. Um, we're discerning what the Lord is leading us to do. And we're going to make the decisions that we believe God is calling us to do. And, and I know right now, like, not, um, we're not, we can't do everything. Um, life in general, is about saying no to good things so that you can say yes to great things. And especially when you have a budget constraint, I think, I, I think that's where we're at, saying no to some good things in order to say yes to all the great things. Um, feel free afterwards to come and talk with us, um, anyone on our Forward and Faith team. You can talk to any of our deacons. They've seen this information also. Uh, some of you are slower processors. Some of you have like 20 questions right now. Some of you will have 20 questions a week from now. This is an ongoing process. We want to update you on where we're at right now. Stay tuned for more details. I'm going to pray. Probably. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're, you're all right. I will take this question from the floor. Uh, it says projected giving me 720. Mm -hmm. Yep. From May 23 to May 24, our funds have been about 450,000. 
Um, I'm not sure on those numbers. Is that? Okay, I know, I know January through April of this year, it was 151,000 given. So that's probably, that's probably right on track. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, um, I think we, yes. And I'll tell you my honest thought on that is I believe uh, I want when we do a, when we extend our campaign, um, we were some going to I don't know. Your pastor is going to have to figure out how to communicate this. We want to honor the giving that has been done. I don't want people who have been faithfully giving for three years to feel guilty and obligated to give more if they can't. If you can, absolutely, you should. Um, but we do have a whole lot of new members who have been started coming in just the last two years who really a lot of, most of this covered is new information. And so I do optimistically believe that with new members, increased giving, I think we could do more than the 720000 honestly, in a 12-year span. But those are my guesses. So you're correct in that. I will take questions from the floor from anyone over the age of 65. <laughs> All right, I'm going to close this in prayer, um, and let's just, we, look, I'll be honest with you, we don't have all the answers yet. Um, we need wisdom and discernment in it. Um, we need God to, we're not there yet, um, but I really believe we're close, and so we do need to pray and ask God to uh, um, sell a few of his cows on a thousand hills would be great. They're bringing great prices right now. Um, and so that'd be great. Okay. Let's pray. I should stop. Let's pray. God, we, um, Lord, I just thank you for this church. Lord, there's something special that you're doing here. I really believe it. Um, Lord, we can feel it. Um, and you've just really, really blessed our church, um, in, in all of its lifetime, but, um, especially we've seen just a, a real outpouring of your blessing in the last six or seven years. And uh, Lord, we don't take it for granted, and we want to discern what you are calling us to do. Um, and as great as our last um, decade has been, Lord, I believe we still have a lot of bright future ahead of us, and, and maybe even some of our best days ahead of us. And so we don't want to just make plans for who we are right now. We want to look down the road and make plans for who you're going to lead us to be, and we can't see the future but we know that you can. And so we trust that you will lead us um, to, to be building a building that will serve our church now um, and serve our church for the next hundred years. Lord, um, I don't know. You know the future. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give us wisdom. Uh, Lord, I pray just that you would, um, you would protect the unity of our body. Um, Lord, your word speaks a lot of times about unity. Um, and if we are unified, um, we're unstoppable. If we divide among ourselves, we will we'll kill ourselves. Lord, I, I know how valuable church unity is. And Lord, I, I know from experience how um, fragile church unity can be. And so, Lord, I just pray um, that you would help all of us to be striving towards church unity. Um, Lord, I pray that you would give our leadership um, wisdom in the decisions that need to be made. Um, and Lord, I pray that you would show us favor now and down the road in saving money. Lord, I, I don't know if that's just favorable interest rates, cheaper material, generous subcontractors, whatever it takes, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that, um, and I know it's quite possible that, uh, I know it's possible that that number could be more than 7.2 million, but Lord, we know that you can work some real miracles and um, that number could be less even, or you could just be super generous and and. Um, Lord, $7.2 million is a ton of money to me, um, but it's nothing for you, and, and you've moved far larger mountains, and so we are optimistic, um, and Lord, we are prepared to boldly move forward when you tell us to move forward. Lord, I just pray that a start date would be clear. Lord, I pray that you would provide the, the funding that we need. We are moving forward in faith, and we are trusting um, Lord, we want to be wise, but we trust you to provide, and we ask that you will um, please protect and lead our church. And Lord, I pray that you would just, um, your spirit would linger here. 
Lord, I pray that it would lead us and teach us and, and just keep doing um, the amazing work that you're doing here, not for our glory, um, but for yours. Lord, I pray um, it's about your kingdom, and I pray that you would build your kingdom right here, um, regardless of what building we're housed in. And so we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. You're dismissed. Come ask any questions you'd like.